Okay, I've been animating Harut in this usual style that I have, but I'm not trying to actually reanimate him in the in the simpler design style. Okay, so I'm trying to get that dance. So what I'm gonna do is move the design over here so I can see him, and then I'm gonna create a new layer. Uh, usually when I'm doing really rough early stuff, I like to do it in uh, vector, so I'm actually gonna go with vector. And then I like to click on this little light bulb here, which is the light table. When I turn that on, it dims everything else, and the, the layer you're on is the one that's most visible. When I'm initially roughing out my animation, I keep things very rough, very loose. I'm not worried about being on model. I mean, you want to be close to it, but I'm not worried about how good it looks. I'm not worried about details. Basically, my main focus in the beginning is focusing on the shape, the arc, arcs of the body, and the energy. And because this is looping, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the first pose on frame one. Yeah, and I like to make the brush a little thick so that keeps me from getting into like deep details and trying to get all um, pretty with my drawings. And it, and it helps also to focus on silhouette because if you if your brush is thick, you kind of are forced to um, focus on simple, clean shapes. That's basically the shape that his entire body is following. So you can see I'm, it's very it's very rough, so kind of just like sometimes it's like painting in dark silhouettes and shapes. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll use the skew tool, like I want to kind of push that bend in his body, that arc. So I'll just do that. Now the cool thing about uh, Harmony is um, I set it up here, I've created a, a peg layer above the, draw, the layer I'm drawing on. And I, basically a peg is where you can grab the whole drawing, just move it around. You can basically animate it. So if on the, sec the second frame, um, if I extend this out, on the second frame, if I move the peg up, and then the next frame I move it this way, it's basically gonna animate, okay? But the way I use pegs is I, on, on, a, on the keyframe here, I basically took the pegs and, and flipped them. So now if I take that drawing and place it under that peg right there, Switch, it's gonna flip this pose. Another thing I like about Harmony is when you copy a drawing and move it over on the on the um, timeline, whatever you do on this other drawing, so like let's say I draw horns on him or something, you go to the next drawing and those horns are there. Like whatever you do to that first drawing, or no matter, like even if you have something like a, like a um, repetition of a drawing, like every four frames that same drawing shows up, whatever you do to one of those drawings is gonna gonna affect all of the drawings no matter how many times they're reused. Okay, so then my next key is kind of going up. He's, his weight is on this foot right here. Okay, so then what he's doing is he's going up and switching over to this foot. Now the, he's gonna catch the weight on this second foot. Again, turn on this light bulb so I can just focus on the layer I'm on. His um, hips are down here, but now he's up here kind of hitting the high point before he goes down on this foot. And I also flip back and forth a lot. Okay, so now this foot is stretched. It's gonna catch the weight on this foot and this other foot is kind of drag dragging on the floor to the next position. Throw this arm in and this other arm pops up from behind. All right. Um, oh, and the way I'm flipping back and forth between the keys is um, S to go back and G to go forward. And I usually don't really have the onion skin on. Usually I only turn it on if I'm if like the foot I want it to be planted so I don't want it off. Then I'll turn it on and just see where that foot is and then turn it off and I kind of flip more than use onion skin. Okay, and then this, uh, he goes on this foot and this other foot he raises up. His weight is still on this foot kind of, uh, but then when he catches his weight on this leg, the body shifts over. Turn head turns this way. Shift 
come over just a little bit more. So it's kind of like he's kind of his body's acting kind of like a width, like if I create a new layer, it's basically doing that. So then his body starts going back, and bam, it's kind of like whipping. So then um, I'll, I'll just copy all these frames and paste them where my where the second half of my cycle is, and there you go. And then um, here, move him over a bit. See, it does the same thing for this one. It moved, it moved this drawing over this way since I moved the other one. Okay. Yeah, that's much better. But if you hit this little circle here, it isolates the layer you're currently drawing on. So it hides everything else. And then I'll turn on the, the color card, which is the white in the background. And then I'll hit enter and it'll cycle through. I want to add one more drawing here. Where he catches his weight on this foot. Here, it's down here. Again, simple shapes, Just focusing mostly on silhouette and how, how things are moving around. When you have different timing on different parts of the body, let's say arms and legs, do you sometimes use layers to separate animation of different parts or, or you always keep it in one layer? My, this initial rough is always on one layer. The, the stage after this will also probably be on one layer, but then when I'm tying things down, then I might start breaking things into different layers. So I might focus on like just the hip movement, um, and then I'll um, layer the chest on top of that. Not always, not, it's not like something I, I always do, but uh, if I do layer stuff, it's going to be in the tie down stage. Okay, and then I'll take this drawing and put it in the second half of the cycle. Again, I'll turn this off and place. And he settles on this, and I kind of want him pushing this way a little bit more. And there's one more drawing here. Goes up to, he throws this leg over, landed here, and this other leg, he kind of like whips back or slides back with his body. Shooting this leg out here. Okay, see if I cop if I grab this drawing and put it here, as I finish this drawing it's gonna finish it on the other side too. As the body goes up, the head kind of drags behind. Which is why the head is here is up, the head is looking up, but as his body shoots up, his head goes down. So the ears are here. And then, and then again, I might grab this and just skew it up a little bit, stretch up, stretch him out even higher. Maybe push him over. And then here we go on the other side and that drawing. Hit play and watch it. Okay, now this will, this would be it for my planning stage. Besides being rough, um, I'm, it's also like how do I explain? It? It's like every time I start animating a scene, I start drawing bad, and as I start roughing stuff out and like figuring out the animation, the drawing kind of starts to kick in later. So it also helps to make a thick brush. So I'm just focusing on the shapes and, and the silhouettes and the getting the energy and not trying to make nice drawings because then whenever I have started stuff before where I, where I start off just trying to make nice drawings and then stuff becomes very, uh, uh, very uh, tight and stiff and it doesn't have that fluid feel to it. Okay, so uh, if I like my rough animation, then I'll create a new layer and this time I'll make it a bitmap. 
add and close. And then now I'll start going in and putting the character more on model. Now if you notice this, this how his head is kind of like pushed out a bit, like pushed out that way, and it's like shoulder and stuff here, it's here. But this guy, his neck is kind of like, um, like we said earlier, he has a sausage type body or a peanut type body, so his head can't go too far off. But I'll try my best to figure that stuff out. Okay, so I'll pick red, and then if I go here, click on this little light icon, I forgot what it's called, top light, and then you can change around, uh, the like how visible the bottom layer is. Like I like it to be kind of barely visible. Okay. And then I'll start going in and putting in more on model and still rough, but a uh, better drawing. Usually I like to start from the hip area because that's where the weight is usually. Push this foot out. I'm gonna keep his slippers on. So he's dancing with slippers. This foot's a little bit bigger because it's in the front, and this foot is in the back. Um, I don't. I'm not breaking him up into layers, but I'm kind of starting to draw as if stuff is on. Like I'm visually breaking stuff up into parts. Alright, I'm gonna finish this drawing and I'm gonna head out because my kids are home and go spend some time with them before they go to bed. Um, and then I'll, if you guys enjoy this, uh, let me know and I'll uh, continue it. For me, I mean, I do this all the time and uh, it seems like it's just like something that would be boring to watch, but if you guys enjoy it and it's helpful, I'll do more. Okay, I'm going to leave this at that, and then next time we'll continue.